All right, my fellow Americans, thanks for joining me again. Today we're going to talk about Shia LaBeouf's, um, apparently a Catholic now. So the past, I don't know, week or so, I've been watching Shia LaBeouf's little other, he's going on different podcasts and talking about his conversion to Catholicism. Sorry, Kitty's joining us. <laughs> as soon as I sat down, he needed attention. <laughs> so that's okay, though. You don't really need to, to, to watch me. You can just listen. So basically, you know, there's always the little, little doubt behind your head because we always see these guys, actors, whoever, do these conversions right they're either this now or that now or they they talk about how I found this or that or this or that and they don't ever really stick to it so I'm just saying that personally I hope that this is the truth I hope Shia is converted to the Christianity I hope he is taking it seriously and it does become part of his life okay well his life I hope that's what it becomes um, there's two, there's lots and lots of things that this conversation specifically right here shows you about what Christianity can do, the concepts of Christianity, how it applies to people and how it changes you for the better, right? So I'm, but I'm just going to talk about two. All right. And that two is that people need authenticity. And the second is the work that God does with people. Okay. So authenticity. So he talks in here a lot about being with the monks and the friars and everything in a natural way. So what I mean by a natural way is like they weren't constantly talking Bible with him. They weren't constantly talking about PO with him. Um, the, but they were laughing, having a good time, sort of fellowshipping with him. Okay. That kind of authenticity where, you know, we're just going to have fun, but this is our life and this is how we live it. And this is what we believe. And so this is how this interaction is going to go down is very important. The Bible talks about that all the time where we are going to go out into this world. We're going to be authentic with people, but we cannot take our biblical beliefs and tuck them away. We have to live them and it has to be the reality of however it is you're hanging out with somebody. So that's good. Um, let's see. So people a lot of times need this practical way to understand that God loves them, to understand that there are things that are important. Like right now we live in a society that doesn't think too much is important other than themselves. The idea of even just like your family being important has like gone out the window. But if you stand your ground and you say, no, this is, you know, my family's important. God is real. And this is how all the different ways I see him. Then they see that practical application, that practical Christianity, and it turns them. Okay. It starts to make them think, okay, this is real. This is legit. You're not just trying to sell me something. You're not just trying to get my money, etc." So then God's work. Okay. I'm going to play a little bit of this. Just look at how Shia is acting now. Okay. I'm going to try and see if I can find the section I wanted to show you guys. All right. Let's just do this. And he's got his hands wrapped and they're saying, let me see. And he's saying no. And then they write him off. You're a liar. Yeah. You're a liar and you're using the church to sensationalize and create a spectacle out here so you can sell keychains or whatever they thought they was doing, you know? And um, so they, they write him off yeah. as a crazy, as a lunatic, uh, a person who is, who is pimping the church is what they thought. Um, and here, it's like trying to describe what pizza tastes like. I can't. Right. I can't describe to you what pizza tastes like. You got to either put pizza in your mouth. No, but they they'll see something in you though. See, they'll see the the change. Exactly. You know? So Jesus says, you know, uh, metanoia is his first word. You know, uh, we say repent, but it means go beyond the mind you have. That's what it means literally. 
So news is mine, meta is beyond. So he's saying, go beyond the, the mind. And so the mind that we all get stuck in is this one of fill it up, fill up the ego with all these things. You got to get beyond that mind. And as you put it, reach out because the central theme of the Bible, you could say, Old Testament and New, is trust, trust in the Lord. Because yeah. our word for that would be faith, you know. And before that means something more cognitive, it means something more visceral. It means trust. But I was told. Yeah. And that's not what I found. God comes to those who give, those who ask. That's what I've experienced. I didn't do any of this. This, this is so we, we talk about like, oh, what's your school of acting and stuff like. I don't know. I have no idea. I showed up for this movie, and there'd be scenes that I, you know, we would do be doing mass, and right before I would do mass, uh, you know, I turn to Alex and I say, "Brother, I love you," and um, he say, "I love you," and that'd be that. That'd be all the prep I need, you know. I, old me used to like live on a set, you know. I would like live in a tank, yeah, and I'd be living in the tank and like oh, and doing all this really extra good. like extra yeah. blah 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 because I was so scared that I wasn't going to get it right that I didn't want to leave any room for error. I had no faith in anything other than my own will and my own efforts. And then you get to this set, and it's, it's um, you can only go so far, and then you really do have to have faith because you're you're. It's not like you're. Um, you're not playing anything you can actually rationalize. Action, you're fighting with the devil. What? You know, how do you, how do you, you, you have to have faith because it feels so, and that's the other thing is like, it could get so corny. Mm -hmm. It could just. So when you look at that, you see, you can listen to his voice. He's calmer. You listen, you watch how his body movements are, they're calmer, they're smoother, they're not jerky like they used to be. He's not as hyped up as he used to be. He's very calm, okay? And he himself attributes that to his conversion, okay? To now knowing God, understanding that God is love and things like this, okay? I'm going to link this, put this link down in the uh, description and possibly the comments if I remember, but definitely the description. All right, he went from crazed maniac to ready, you know, ready to die and fighting everything to a man you can look at sitting calmly. He has the calm demeanor. Um, in another podcast I just briefly watched, he's talking about how now his focus has become his family and, and like his work and stuff. And God. All right, and the change here is amazing. And I say that not in the way, and not in the sense of, I can't believe it, but in the sense of it creates wonder. Okay. When I look at these things, I'm like, yep, look at that. Look what God does. Cause this is what God does. Why? Because he's real. Because this whole thing isn't just an opinion. It isn't just, well, some people believe that and it works for them. It works for everybody. Now, I agree that maybe you have to come to it different ways, but when you get down to it, you read the gospel, you read the Bible, that is the change that you can expect. Even if you say, okay, but I'm already a calm person, there are other changes that need to be made in your life. I can guarantee it. Um, it is just one of those things. This is a, this is... This is a practical Christianity video because you can see the change. Okay. You can see it. Um, he is not, when he gets on podcasts, other podcasts, he does still curse, but it's not as often, you know, it's not as hard hitting. You can definitely see the change in him. So I, like I said, I, I hope that this is a, a sincere change. It does appear to me to be a sincere change. And so when I look at this, I look and I go, wow, okay, he has changed. Just being around these other, these other Padres, being around these other Christian men and being um, counseled by them, being discipled by them and reading the Bible daily and learning about Padre Pio. He's one of my favorite, he's actually one of my favorite Catholics, so I may be watching this movie, but... Um, <clears throat> learning about Padre Pio and playing this role has gotten him close to God. Okay. And so for me, I look at that and go, okay, so God has changed this man's life 
forever. And that's what he says on other podcasts too. This is what he is doing, that he needs it in his life and that it's not ever going away. So praise God. All right. There's a third thing in here I wanted to point out um, that I noticed. And he went through, while he was with the friars and whoever else he was with, they weren't just teaching him the Bible, right? He actually went through a classical education where he learned, where he read many of the classical thinkers and he was taught the underlying connection th that all things have, right? So that classical education pretty much always presupposes a God, okay? People who, that is the way we used to educate ourselves. When you got an education, it was a classical one. So you learned a lot of history. You read a lot of people who were thinkers, past, past thinkers. You read a lot about God and what people used to think God was, what we know God is now, um, and how all of this applies. So you learn about the nature of mankind, not only through mankind's observations of ourselves, but then through the lens of God. And so that is a very important aspect of a classical education. And since we don't have that anymore, we aren't teaching people that way anymore. We miss a lot of the nuance of life, a lot of the real beauty that exists in the interconnectivity of all things, okay, that God created. Um, one of the ways that we do sometimes see it is through like the, the circle of life is what we call it when there's birth, life, and death. When death creates life, which then continues into birth, life, and death, okay? <clears throat> But if you never thought about it or you don't know about it or things like that or you're not taught about it then you don't understand it you don't understand the beauty of it and so he got a very good education while he's there and again guys why because christianity you you believe in education christianity has at its center education and discipleship and family Hey, this is what creates good, positive, productive, you know, anything, society, anything. Okay. Let me see what else did I write here about this classical education. Oh, um, this connects also. So he got the same type, even though it's a small, it's almost like postage stamp, stamp size amount of education compared to like what our founding fathers went through. A lot of times people like to say, you know, it's, this is not a Christian nation. We don't use Christianity to do it. Okay. So it's true where it's true that we get to have freedom of religion, right? We have that concept in there because that concepts in the Bible, you have to choose who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve yourself mainly by being atheistic and everything else? Are you going to serve other gods by being paganistic in whatever form that takes? Or are you going to serve the God of the Bible? Okay. The, the highest one, basically the, the only one really. And that is where they were. Okay. They understood everything had connections. They understood that they understood the <clears throat> human condition that we're not all good, that we don't all have good intentions inside of us, right? That the nature of man is struggle. The nature of man is selfishness. The nature of man is to go about and do things in a way that is not always good for everyone, okay? <clears throat> and they understood this because of that classical education and the Bible that is central in that education most of the time. So as you can see, like there's, there's a lot of, the Bible has, uh, has hit you in a lot of ways. It has a lot of facets, a lot of ways that it will teach you things. Now, sometimes you don't always see it, but it's usually always there. All right. <clears throat> At the very least, you get to learn about the nature of human, of humanity. I was reading Isaiah this morning. I told, I, um, I don't exactly understand what's going on in the story, but I saw the nature of man. I understood the reaction to what was going on. I saw 
all kinds of stuff in there. But I had to think about it. It, took, it has taken most of the day for me to think about well, what's really going on in there. Okay, guys, uh, I got some stuff I got to go do. So thank you so much for joining me, my fellow Americans. If you liked this episode, excuse me, I just had some, just has a root beer. So now it's um, a little burpy. If you liked this episode, then go ahead and give it a like, comment, let me know what you think, um, and share it. It's someone else you might like to know or like to see it. <laughs> I can talk. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to put this up on the podcast probably next week. So until next time, guys, remember to pray and read your Bible and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.